Hi, I'm Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, part of IBM Europe. This movie is about Gangular, a performance tool that I've been using for a couple of years now, and I particularly like it because it's supported on the IBM Powerbase machines, that System P, P series, and there's also the Powerbase blades. Now, Gangler is an open source project, and you can see the website at the top, so you can go and have a look at all the information and download the source code. It's very popular and it's developing fast. People are adding stuff to the actual code itself or adding add-ons that you can use to make Gangler even easier to use. And I'd like to give a big thumbs up to the developers involved. It's a very impressive piece of software. It also runs on a wide variety of operating systems. You can see the list there on the right. Now there are a few IBMers that are getting involved and they've added extensions for the Power 4, 5 and 6 machines and uh, looking at some of the performance numbers that we particularly want to track out of those systems. And we've provided downloadable packages for AIX 4, 5 and 6 and for Linux on Power, namely Red Hat and SUSE, but uh, the other versions of Linux on Power also are available for Ganglia. I would like to highlight the fact that these extensions from IBMers are being offered to the open source community to be included. Now let's have a very brief view of how Gangler actually works. On the left hand side here we see that for each node or logical partition on our P-series machines we run a program called Gmon-D, that's the Ganglia Monitor Daemon. It's just a small daemon that we run on each machine and it has a very small configuration file. And for a simple setup we just make one line change to that configuration file to give it the name of the cluster. These Gmondes then actually talk to each other and share information. On the right hand side here, on a web server, which typically is Apache 2, but it could be something else, we run this extra process or daemon here called gmetad. This collects the data from one of the Gmondes to find out all the performance data about the cluster. This has uh, one configuration file too, very simple to edit and administrate and it collects all this data and puts it into a round robin database using another open source tool called RRD tool. Again a very impressive open source tool that will keep the data in a small database that will not grow with uh, age. Then if we look at the browser we click on the website where we're running Ganglia it calls these PHP scripts that actually extract information out of the round robin database tool databases and it builds up your web pages and your graph and then shows you back on the browser. This means that we don't actually create pages until we're actually looking at them and they're created dynamically. This saves a lot of CPU power. In fact, all of these processes take so little CPU power, it's actually difficult to actually find them above the sort of noise level of demons ticking around on your machine. On System P power based machines, we tend to run lots of logical partitions and we put all the logical partitions of one particular machine into a single ganglia cluster. Then when we look at this cluster we can see all the workload that's happening on one particular machine as a group. At the top right here we have a P505 as a two-way machine. It's running 11 different operating systems in 11 logical partitions and we put that as a cluster called Serenity. One of those logical partitions is actually running CZ9 and the Ganglia website. On the left hand side we have a bigger machine, it's an 8-way P550Q. That's running 7 or 8 logical partitions, again a mixture of operating systems, and that's in a Ganglia cluster called Sunset. We can of course put lots of other machines together in any way we like and put them into clusters. Particularly if we have machines that aren't running logical partitions, we could just use them as separate machines and put them into a bits and bobs cluster. Ganglia is a dynamic web page. It's best to actually just show you what it does to give you a feel for what it can do for you. Here's the default top page. Uh, we have a grid which is a grouping of all our clusters and at the top here we have two graphs that are showing us what the whole of our computer center is doing. In this case I just have a couple of clusters. Talked about Sunset and Serenity here we can see neither of them are particularly busy. Although in Sunset here we can immediately see that there's one host down. Now that might worry me. What can I actually do to find out what's going on there? If I just click on the, any of the Sunset graphs, I can have a look at the details. And if I scan down to the bottom here, this is a summary for each of the nodes in our cluster. And we can see that it's a partition here called 
WP13 and I remember now that uh, I actually took that down it was a temporary crash and burn logical partition so we can ignore that now if we go back I'd like to spend some more time looking at the serenity cluster in here here we're just looking at two things the load average and what's happening in memory of our cluster to give us an overall view I'll click here now on serenity to have a look at uh, that particular cluster first thing we might note at the top here I have 11 logical partitions and I have 11 hosts in here and none of them down which is good news we've got to be careful with this CPU total this is actually the total number of virtual processes in our P-series machines if we look down the bottom again we can see that uh, I have 11 machines running in here um, the coloration means that this one's the uh, busiest they're in uh, descending order of how busy they are. The merit here is CPU used, which is the, the physical CPU used in our machine. And we can quickly get a view here of which of our clusters are busy. Do have to be slightly clever. If you see this little M, these are in milli, so these are thousands. So for example, this guy here is using a thousand milli, so this is one CPU on this graph here, so he's using about half a CPU on average in here. These guys are using fractions of a CPU. When we see that little m, that means we're talking of uh, thousands. If I go back up the top here, we can see that we can control things that we're actually monitoring. For example, we're currently looking at CPU use, but we can look at any one of a large collection of uh, different numbers in here. So we can look at the CPU used, a particularly useful one, but we could look at something, for example, are we using 64-bit operating systems here. If again I scroll down to the bottom you have a yes everywhere, good. We can do things like uh, looking at the what operating system we're actually running in our cluster. So we're using a virtual I.O. server in this one here and we're using some Linux and some AIX. Okay, which versions are we using? Look at the receipt release we can say this is uh, AX6, this is AX5, and we have uh, various flavors of Linux running in here. here we have actually F Fedora Core 5 running in this particular logical partition. And we can look at all these sorts of things. We can say what is the weight factor. Is SMT switched on or off? For example, look at the weight. We can say have we given all of these partitions a similar weight? Well, some of them are set to just over 100, some of them are set to 200, so these two are more important logical partitions in our cluster. But we like the CPU used, physical CPU used. We also note across here, by default, we're looking at the last hour. We can change that to immediately. We can look at the last day, for example, what's been happening here. This one, for example, has only been using it's half a CPU for particular periods during the day, otherwise it's been very low. And we can just as easily look at the last uh, week or month. Let's have a look at month. You can see here that the graphs actually run out here just at the beginning of uh, week one. So I actually built this Ganglia cluster uh, just after Christmas, so uh, the first week of the year. And again here we can see that this is the busy workload partition, we can see the peaks and troughs here it's actually a batch run, batch job running uh, at night I think. We can also look to have a look at the global view of what this machine is up to. Let's go back to the let's say the last day and this graph here shows us the shared processor pool. All these workload partitions here are working out of a shared pool and we can see the overall shared pool. We have two CPUs in here and we're peaking at just over one and a quarter. Any graph with a blue border around it, this is an add-on for Ganglia and we means we can click on here and get a detailed graph. So here we go. Each of the logical partitions is given a different color and this red one here is this WPAR9 that we already knew was quite busy and we can see him coming and going. There's a slight outage here for example, I actually switched off all the ganglia demons as a little experiment, but we can see that actually happened here. So we can actually find outages on a particular machine by using a ganglia, which can be useful. If 
we got uh, unreliable machines. But we can see most of these workload partitions are not doing very much. Just this red one kicks in every now and again in the uh, evenings and uh, over nearly over midnight. Now that gives us a clue about which of the busy logical partitions is this one here. It's actually highlighted. And uh, if we click on here, we'll actually look at this particular node, this logical partition in this case, and we can find out some interesting information about it immediately. Here's its host name. We know that it was booted on uh, December the 27th. Uh, it's not capped, so we can go over its entitlement. We uh, can see some other things here. 64-bit kernel, as we said. Um, it's a logical partition. Yeah, down here it's a shared process of logical partition. We can also see that the SMT switched on, how long it's been running, which version of AIX is actually running. And it's uh, we're on a Power 5 base machine in here. And this is actually the serial number of the machine, so if we needed report problems we've got that information already here. Down here we have that uh, it, it knows about two CPUs, this is the virtual process account and they're running at 1.65 gigahertz and this guy's got half a gigabyte of real memory and half a gigabyte of uh, paging space and we can see here the details of what's actually going on in this particular logical partition now so we have the CPU details and the uh, network details blue area around this graph so again we can click in here to find out some uh, more details and we can scroll down and see all the individual numbers here for this particular logical partition CPU used we've seen globally and now we can see the individual details for this particular logical partition If we go at the top, there's a field here that we can go into. This should be blank at the moment. But if we wanted to extend Ganglia, if we have any script or tool on the uh, operating system that can give us a number or even a string, we can pass this to Ganglia. It gets pushed up to the uh, website and we can see the details here. If it's a number, Ganglia will actually start graphing that for us so we can track that number from then on and it will auto scale all these graphs for us. Okay, that's just a quick look around of what we can actually do with this basic version of Ganglia. Let's look at the Serenity cluster again. I have an extension up here that allows us to look at any particular period of time. And we've increased the amount of data points that the RRD tool actually captures under the covers. If we click on here we can say let's look from January the 1st to today. Now we'll find our graphs are actually covering these particular period of time rather than one of the last week, last day, last month, that sort of graphs. And again we can look at a particular period of time in here, what's going on. Very useful extension to Kanglia. Let's have a quick look now at uh, another feature of an add-on of Kanglia called uh, custom graphs. Here we see the graph here for network last hour, but um, we don't actually want to see that. We want to see what the overall IO rate was through our network adapters. So if we go back up the top here and hit custom graph, we can decide exactly what uh, we want to look at. Give it a name, and we can choose what we like here. The bytes in and bytes out are the, the network details. And we don't want a line, we want to stack these two graphs and uh, Let's uh, select that particular colour. Blue and red. So now we can see the overall stats. In this case, it wasn't very much I/O, but it was 50k in and out, and the colours we like. Well, that is it for this quick look around Ganglia, particularly running on the power-based machines. Remember, you can get uh, Ganglia information from the website at the top and the puzzle.org website if you want the packages pre-built for AIX and Linux on Power to work on the power-based machines.